Okay, so we'll go back to another video. Today's we have an integral, so we have the natural logs, we have a trigonometric function, and then we have some sort of you know quadratic um, polynomial, all in combination of a single integrand. We have from the integral from one to infinity of sine the force of ln of x divided by x squared, then ln of x, and then follow up with dx. So all of this stuff is not as um, as overstimulating as you think, since there are a couple of things we will be using. Use substitution is actually a pretty much like a guarantee, you know, technique we'll be using. And then since there's a sign of um, sine to the fourth root rather than sine function in general, you can kind of expect that there's going to be some sort of like trick identities that we're going to be using to rewrite some of that stuff. Another thing for the entire uh, way to approach this entire thing is actually trying to define a function and then plug that number slash parameter back into it to actually give our, you know, get the value of the given integral we're trying to solve for. So in other words, you can think of famous strict that's actually, you know, in the process we will be utilizing. So a lot of things going on over here. It's um, oh, just a lot of, you know, it's all just basic calculus, you know, techniques from there. A lot of things to, you know, wrap wrap around and then put outside the box, think outside the box such that, you know, you got to get a little creative with this sort of stuff. So um, with all that said and done, why don't we actually just jump right in? All right, so I mentioned u sub, so I think you can see that that's actually going to be our first step. Let's actually let x equals e to the power t. We can kind of see that such that there's a natural log of x. So if I were to plug that back in, the natural log function will just disappear by itself. So then I would have to put um, differentiate both sides. So dx is equal to e to the power t and then dt. So rewrite all this. Let me just call this capital I, our given integral. So then we have to change our bounds. So let's see if I plug infinity. So this is actually going to be infinity, well, for x, and then we solve for t, so that's going to be infinity. If I plug in 1 for x, so that means t is going to equal 0, and then putting all this back, so I have the sine to the fourth of t, and then all this being divided by, so let's see, x to the power, or x squared, so that means if I solve this for both sides, so that means it's going to be e to the power um, 2t, and then replace um, ln, e to the, um, ln of e to the t, so that's just going to be t. And then we just substitute our differential over here, dx, so this is going to be times e to the power t and then dt. Then reducing all this down, we have our in lovely integral of just 0 to infinity of e. So for one thing, I have that e to the t and then e to the um, 2t, so divide by that. So I'll write this in terms of like negative power, so it's going to be e to the negative t and then divided by or times sine sine up to the fourth of t and then all this being divided by t and then dt okay so that's what we're left with so now um here comes where i mentioned famous trick is going to come in handy so what's actually define a function so we're going to call this um so our integral is going to be i so i'll call this i with the parameter of alpha so we'll let i of alpha be the um, integral that we're defining. So from zero to infinity of e to the negative alpha times t, and then sine of to the fourth power of t, and then divided by um, t, then dt. And then as you can see, if I were to plug this back over here for alpha is equal one, that is actually our given you know integral we're trying to calculate over here. Okay, so with this, now let's actually take the derivative in respect to alpha to both sides. So Feynman's trick is, in other words, we're using. So alpha prime, or i prime of alpha, and then if I um, differentiate inside the integral, so that means just focusing on alpha. So this entire thing what we have is that there's a negative, so I can actually just you know factor that out. So I, after, take, after that differentiation, so we have negative, and then the integral from zero to infinity of just e to the negative alpha t, and then times sine to the power four of t, and then dt. And so, as you notice, that if I were to plug alpha, this is actually going to come in handy later, so let's actually you know, write this down. If, if I were to take alpha, if I take that limit as it approaches infinity, so then that would have to imply that um, I of alpha is indeed just going to approach zero. So we're actually just going to um, keep this in mind for later because there's actually going to be some integration, like actual integration involved in, in a form of you know, the indefinite integral. So, okay, so with that in mind, so here's some things we're gonna actually use some trigonometric identities because as you notice, we have a sine to the fourth t. So any sort of integral dealing with that high power um, of the exponent is not gonna be as easy as you think. So there's gotta be some way we can rewrite this to make things a little bit easier on our hands. So we know that 
uh, sine to the power 4 of t. So let's see. In other words, that's kind of the same thing written as sine square of t and then take that square. And then we know that sine squared t, we know that it has a nice identity of the following in terms of cosine. 1 minus cosine of 2t and then divided by 2 and then so square that. And so now if I just expand this entire thing out, so we know that um, this, is a, this is written such that, and also at the same time, I actually factor out the 1 over 4 because of this, um, the denominator of 2, and then you take the square of that. So I have 1 divided by 4, and then inside, so you just square, you know, expand that binomial out. So we have 1, then minus 2 times um, cosine of 2 times t, and then add this with cosine square of 2t, okay? So... Now let's actually just, you know, um, distribute the one over four into all of this. So now, so far this will lead us with just one divided by four and then minus one divided by, um, one, one divided by two and then cosine of two times, um, cosine of two T. And then next add, the, add this with one divided by four of cosine squared two T, but let's actually substitute this so it has its nice identity such that this can be substituted to be written as one and then plus cosine of 4t and then divided by two okay and now let's actually you know further you know simplify the things out so this will yield us with three divided by eight then minus one divided by two cosine of 2t and then add this with one over eight uh multiply with cosine of 4t okay so now with this in mind so now let's actually substitute this entire thing back into here so now i prime of alpha is then going to equal to the following integral over here so negative the integral from zero to infinity of just e and then multiply or uh, to the power alpha negative alpha t and then we just substitute this entire thing that we just you know you know expanded out for the sine to the power four of t so three divided by eight then minus one half cosine of two t and then, and then add this with one divided by eight and then cosine of four t and just close it off with just dt over here. All right, so now um, here's some things that we're gonna note and such that we're actually gonna treat these value as our given. If you actually wanna do the full computation yourself, you know, feel free to do so. But what we have is, um, you know, let me switch to this one. So we have a nice close form in, in the combination of our integrand of both being an exponential and a trigonometric function combined together. So if I have my parameters, so let's see, I have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the power, so we're going to say in this case this is going to be for the parameter a times x and then cosine of b times x. So two different parameters for, you know, a and b. So we have this nice close form such that it's going to be equal to a divided by a squared plus b squared. Okay, so with this in mind, we can actually see that if I were to distribute the e to the negative alpha t into the ones that are associated with the cosine, we can actually just treat those as like using our closed form given values to just plug in the values over here. Because such that we have, if I have zero to infinity of distributing for the here and here, so let's see, I have um, e and then minus alpha t, then multiply with cosine of 2t dt, we can say that that's actually just going to be equal alpha and then divided by alpha squared plus four. And then the other integral, the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative alpha t, then multiplied by cosine of four t dt is then just going to equal alpha. Let me fix that alpha for a second. It's just going to be alpha and then divided by alpha squared plus six t. Okay, so now, now to reiterate all this, so alpha or i i prime of alpha is then just going to equal to our, you know, what we have, you know, put in so far. So to reiterate all this, and then also just to factor out some of the terms over here, we have that um, this is going to be one half, then the integral from zero to infinity of e negative alpha t cosine of 2t, then dt, then minus three divided by eight, the integral from zero to infinity of just e to the negative um yeah need e to the negative um alpha t then dt and the last one i have is then minus one over eight divide uh, multiplied by the integral from zero to infinity of e to negative alpha t and then cosine of four t then dt so then to reiterate all this then using our um plug in value plug in the values that we actually do in and then we actually know like how to calculate this indefinite integral that's straightforward so then what we have is that just going to be one half and then multiply with 
uh, what is it, alpha, let me actually um, write this to the side over here, so just to utilize the room. So now I have one half and then times, um, what is it, times alpha, then alpha squared plus four, then the next thing, three divided by eight, and then calculate the definite integral, which we have negative t, or the definite integral, excuse me, um, then divided by alpha, then we plug in our values from zero to infinity, and then the last thing is minus one over eight, then multiply with alpha divided by alpha squared plus 16. Okay, and then this should come down to just the following. So then I have simply is, um, and then also to jump another step ahead because eventually you're gonna see that all this stuff is, um, so to, let me, I'll explain things in just a sec. So let's actually um, fix these two um, terms over here, our values. So the next thing is let's actually multiply and divide a two to both the numerator and denominator. So then I have one over four, and then now it's gonna be um, two alpha, and then alpha squared plus four. This thing is just simply just gonna be um, minus three divided by eight, uh, multiply by one divided by alpha, and then the last thing minus one over 16, and then times two alpha, and alpha squared plus 16. Okay, and so, all this, so now, is equal to i times i prime alpha. So now let's actually take the indefinite integral to both sides in respect to alpha. So then I'll just, um, now the left hand side of course is simply we're just going back to just i of alpha. And then over here is actually, it's antiderivative of course is gonna be in terms of the natural log function. This is why we write it this way to make things a little bit easier in terms of the anti-differentiation. Um, so with this, we're gonna have one over four, then multiply by ln. So I'm just gonna write the absolute value sign, just keep the positive because it's the natural log. Alpha squared plus four, and then next I have minus three divided by eight, multiply by the natural log of alpha, and then minus one over 16, the natural log of alpha squared plus 16. And keep in mind that we're, if, um, we're integrating both sides, but <clears throat> not in um, in terms of like we have a bound. So so this is just treated as a respect of, you know, the indefinite integral. So make sure you add a constant plus C at the end. Okay, so now the next thing is, let's actually fix this up a little bit because we have a bunch of natural logs everywhere in our terms over here. So we actually want to do things such that we actually want to combine it in just a single natural log function all on its own. So, but as you see, I have a one over four, three over eight and one over 16 at the constant. So it's nothing matches up in that case. Let's, so let's fix that. So one over four, let's write this in terms of one over 16. So one over 16 and then times four ln of alpha squared plus four. Then the next thing over here, three divided by eight, that can be written as, so I'll say one um, divided by 16, and then times six times the natural log of alpha. And then over here, this is just fine the way it is. So minus one over 16, and then natural log of alpha squared plus 16, and then plus C. Okay, and so all this together gives us just one over 16, then utilizing the natural log um, properties, this is gonna yield us with just alpha squared plus four to the power four, all this being divided by, so this is gonna be what, alpha to the power six, and then inside is gonna be alpha squared plus 16, and then close that off, plus C, okay? So now, last thing, or, no, well, almost, we're almost getting there, I shouldn't necessarily say last thing. Let's actually take the limit of both sides as alpha approach, approaches infinity. Let's see if I got the room to do this. So if I were to take the limit as alpha approaches infinity, so I of alpha, so then that means that notice that if I were to take the limit as alpha approaches infinity, let me expand this out a little bit. So it's one over 16 on this side and then the natural log. So inside, if I would just expand this out to the four power, we just know that the beginning term is gonna be alpha to the power eight. I'm not gonna expand the entire thing out. So I'll just leave it as a follow with just the ellipses, the, dots. Same thing over here, it's actually going to be higher power of um, alpha to the power 8. Just going to expand this out, and um, I don't have the room to write the plus c, so I'll just put that on the top. So if I just take alpha approaches infinity to all of this, they share the same power, which is actually just going to cancel out, meaning that this entire thing is simply just going to be approaching zero, or well, we know that actually, first time I should say that we we actually observed that I of alpha is gonna approach zero, so the left-hand side is gonna be zero. Meanwhile, this is actually going to approach just one, so I have ln of one, one over 16 times ln of one, 
and then plus C. But of course, element of one is just gonna equal zero, so therefore the conclusion is that C is going to equal zero. And so with all this together, I have that capital I, um, our given integral, which leads to over here, well, not well, not just yet because I have I have alpha, but then I have to plug alpha equals one. So we can actually, let me first say that um, I and then alpha is gonna equal simply just one divided by 16, the natural log of um, alpha square plus four, then to the power four, then divided by alpha to the power six times alpha square plus 16. And so that closes that off. And so all we have to do now is just plug alpha is equal to one. And so if I just plug all this, so let's see, I have alpha square, so one plus four is five, and then five to the power four is gonna be 625. And on the bottom is gonna be one and then times 17, so 17. And so therefore I, which is the given integral we want to plug in that was given from before, is gonna to equal to just one divided by 16 times the natural log of 625 divided by 17. And so with that, that is our final answer to our integral. Utilizing all the, you know, elementary calculus techniques a little bit in a more, you know, over overpowering way, Feynman's, tri Feynman's trick, expanding out the, you know, natural logs, well, not natural logs, more of the, well, yes, natural logs, but also the trigonometric formulas that we just use, like, for example, the sine of four. So everything all into just this one, I guess, complicated answer, you could say, maybe, but here it is. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.